Hello wildflowers and welcome back to The Rambling Rose. In this episode, we'll be back in my green witch garden again, digging, planning and planting a beautiful enchanted rose garden in honour of one of my favourite goddesses. You might recall that in my Sewing a Secret Garden episode, I introduced you to the different zones in my ever-evolving cottage garden and how I promised to plant a brand new garden bed with you centered around this stunning goddess bird bath. When I spotted her on my local buy swap cell group, I knew instantly that she was the one. Fairies love magical garden decor, mirrors, water features, wind chimes and such, and I felt they would adore this bird bath. I thought she would make the perfect centerpiece for a rose garden, one that would delight any romantic soul or sweet little nana at heart. And of course, with the hot Australian summer on the way, it would hopefully become a beloved oasis for native birds, bees, and other beneficial insects. But at first, I couldn't quite decide which goddess she most resembled and which one I most wanted to honor with this garden. So let's start planting and wait for a sign from the fairies. And once all the hard work is done, We'll head on up to my art loft to paint another page of my new illustrated book, Wild Fairy Magic. Finally, a few weeks later, we'll return to the Rose Goddess Garden for the final reveal. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this little gardening adventure. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying my content. The first step in planning a new garden is of course selecting the perfect spot. You'll need to take into account the soil type and slope, potential pests and how much water or sunshine your plants require. So because roses love a sunny position, I've chosen this spot with no overhanging trees where they'll have full sunshine all day long. Doesn't that sound lovely? <laughs> there is a gradual slope to the land so there should be good drainage too. But to be radically honest, I'm no expert, just following my witchy intuition. With a measuring tape, I've marked out a rough circle around the bird bath and dug up the grass. This soil is a little on the clayish side, so I've had to break it all up with a little elbow grease and then with a mixture of gypsum, blood and bone, compost and mulch, we should be all set. A border of natural stones will help the grass from creeping in and the mulch from spilling out. Classic cottage gardens have a rambling, imperfect look about them, so it's okay if your borders are irregular. Eventually you'll have flowers and ground covers spilling out every which way and that will look just magical. Now that the garden bed is ready, it's time to take a moment to consider our plant selection. I did a lot of research into companion plants for roses and classic cottage garden flowers. Most importantly, I wanted plants that would attract beneficial insects and still look pretty during the winter months. The roses I chose are a mixture of blue moon and iceberg, a soft mauve and white palette with one wild card, an old tea rose that was gifted to me by a dear friend rescued from a little old house that's due to be demolished. I had no idea what colour she'll be, but I popped a little rose quartz in her pot, hoping that the fairies will reward me with a delightful surprise when she blooms. I've chosen sweet alyssum, purple and white flowering catmint, roughly lavender and lemon scented thyme to keep my roses company. They'll attract lady beetles to keep the aphids away and provide a living ground cover beneath the roses, a carpet of tiny blooms. So let's start with the roses, taking our time to arrange the pots into the most pleasing position. I'm considering which roses will be seen from my veranda and my little antique bistro set where I like to sit and read or sip a cup of tea. Also keeping in mind the direction of the summer sun and thinking about which taller plants might cast shade on the smaller ones. 
The thyme, for example, is fine with a bit of shade, and so I'll plant a creeping variety around the base of the statue, hopefully one day growing all around her delicate feet. A bit more digging and we'll get the roses into position. I have a feeling I may have mixed up my blue moon and iceberg, but that's okay. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> Let's plant the catmint and lavender somewhat randomly between the roses and closer to the edges like this. Gosh, isn't this blushberry ruffles just gorgeous? It looks so beautiful set against the bright violet of the other lavender, don't you think? Now, we just tuck the lemon thyme and the sweet alyssum all the way around the border and the planting is complete. Finally, we'll finish it all off with some juicy mulch and water them in with a splash of seaweed solution. We'll return at the end of spring to see how the garden is going. In the meantime, we'll sit among the flowers and dream of what to include next in Wild Fairy Magic. It's a rambling, meandering, illustrated book <laughs> filled with my poetic ponderings. So I thought it might be nice to include a quote about roses, followed by a few pages for journaling. Drive the same roads every day We both get there our own this and an apple tree How different two souls can be But we both grow from the same sorrow If we both know we'll be together tomorrow I can be like a tree in the wind Same old roots but I can bend Turning to understand Roses do not bloom hurriedly, says the quote, for beauty, like any masterpiece, takes time to blossom. I think there's something so profound in that, don't you? Now it's almost like a dance, rendering of stubbornness, and it just cuts us deeper through the long Five weeks later and summer is near. The subtle fragrance of lemon-scented eucalyptus drifts on the breeze and my new garden is coming into its fullest expression. Here, peering through the jeweled spires of my beloved moon garden, I can see the roses beginning to bloom. When my wildcard rose unfurled her petals, she surprised me with a soft lemon yellow. But to my utter disbelief, over the course of just one day, she first turned to a sweet apricot that took my breath away, and then to a vibrant coral pink, almost like a tequila sunrise. Have you ever seen a rose like this? This was the sign I was looking for, and I knew in my heart that the fairies were whispering to me through this magical rose. This was indeed the triple goddess, otherwise known as Hecate, goddess of all witches. She embodies the maiden, mother and crone energy, and the circle of roses surrounding her would represent the wheel of the year. Right now, surrounded by flowers, she is fully embodying the maiden energy, but by the end of autumn, when all the roses are withered and brown, she will really be in her element. As winter rolls around and all the leaves have fallen, 
she'll embody the magnificent wise crone. There's so much to be said about Hecate, but she has been calling to me since last Samhain, her voice demanding to be heard. She is also the goddess of hounds, and her arrival is heralded by the sound of wild dogs howling, and I think that's rather cool. In fact, the first rose that ever appeared in my garden, also a gift from the fairies, was a dog rose or witch's rose. And I can't imagine any goddess more fitting for my enchanted garden. Planting a garden and watching it come to life over the years must be one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. It brings me so much joy to work hand in hand with Mother Nature, creating something of beauty and magic a living artwork with my own two hands. Being out in the garden is incredibly healing, sun on my skin, earth between my fingers and toes. It allows me to enter a flow state where all my fears and anxieties recede, my chattering mind goes quiet, and I feel in a peaceful state of ebb and flow, effortlessly dissolving into the rhythm of life. My heartbeat seems to slow to that of the pace of earth itself, and insights flow effortlessly to me. I so hope you enjoyed this film, Wildflowers, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon, somewhere where the fairies play.